Hey everyone, this is Allison from Thriving Well Disabled, and today I want to talk to you about excuses versus explanations and the idea of hiding behind your disability. Um, I was inspired to do this, and th this is also the topic of the post that I put out today. I was inspired to do this because of a uh, bad experience I'm, I'm still processing, uh, which occurred last year, but was um, brought up when I filed a, a, a complaint of ableism with the group that this person and I both participate in. And uh, the group decided that there was no penalty of any sort for this. And I think it's unfortunate, not just because I'm hurt, but also because it's robbed him of an opportunity to learn or reevaluate his decisions. So what do I mean by hiding behind your disability? What I mean by that is that there are definitely things that are disabilities legitimately um, make more challenging or make impossible. Uh, Somebody who's a full-time wheelchair user is not going to climb up a flight of stairs. Um, no matter how positive their mindset, no matter how, you know, much they wish they could or whatever, they're not going to do it. They can't because that is part of their disability. Uh, where it gets tricky is there's a lot of things that are scary to contemplate because of our disabilities or are more challenging because of our disabilities or um, take more energy because of our disabilities. And there are cases where saying, I can't do it makes sense. Uh, you know, times when you've tried something yeah. and the <laughs> cost versus reward just wasn't worth it. As an example, there are a lot of people who use wheelchairs part-time. There's not necessarily a problem that physically keeps their legs from working, but they may be dealing with a lot of fatigue, or it's very painful to walk, or other things where using a wheelchair greatly improves their quality of life. And so they use the wheelchair most of the time or on bad days, etc. And so they're not going to say, I absolutely can't walk because of my disability, but they are going to say something along the lines of using the wheelchair gives me freedom. Using um, the wheelchair helps improve my quality of life. They're acknowledging their limitations, they're acknowledging the degree of their limitations, and they're moving on forward. Um, the challenge can be, where's the line about what is a can or can't versus what's a too much energy? And also, it's really, really important to be able to be self-aware enough to know what your boundaries are and be willing and able to push those boundaries when and if appropriate. Um, as an exa using the wheelchair example, there are people who need the wheelchair for a while and then they reach a new um, level of healing or uh, encounter a different problem and then the wheelchair might become something that they don't need as often or don't use as much, or very simply, the thing that gets people in wheelchairs accused of faking. For this one specific moment, the wheelchair isn't useful and they don't stay in it. Um, example of that would be a, a person using a wheelchair who goes to the grocery store and there's something on a high shelf. They have the energy to stand up and pull the thing off the shelf, but they still are using the wheelchair because that saves them energy. Um, other people who don't understand disabilities might look at them like they're faking, which is not the case. Uh, it's just more effort to go searching around the store to find somebody to help you than it is to stand up for a moment, grab the 
grab the thing and sit back down. All of that is fine. It's good. It's healthy. The challenge or problem I'm talking about, which may be especially severe with mental health and mental illness, um, but I think is true for pretty much all conditions, is just like anybody else, we have a fear of failure. And we have a fear of being embarrassed or humiliated. And we have a fear of, you know, things not going right. And so there are times when that fear rears up and instead of looking at our limits and pushing them, we just go, nope, can't do it. And, you know, kind of hide again, every condition has some very hard limits of nope, can't do it. Every condition, there's things that just, yeah, you can do that. What I'm focused on here is that squishy middle ground where sometimes you can do it or maybe you can do it. Doing it might be a push, but it's possible. That's the space that I'm concerned because that's a space with potential for growth, both physical and mental emotional. I'm especially concerned, honestly, with the mental emotional because the physical stuff often can be a little better defined and there can be outside uh, judges on that. If you're having a physical limitation, often you can talk to your physical therapist or your doctor or a family member, somebody else who can help you evaluate. Is this physically possible? Is it not? What are my risks? What are my benefits? Sometimes that advice is wrong or bad and you have to look for more, but the fact remains it's, it's there with mental and emotional stuff, it really is often an internal uh, debate and you have to decide if you can do it and you have to either reaffirm to yourself that you can do it or, um, or have the negative, you know, if you have negative self-talk, you have it and you, you know, either you listen to it and put yourself on a, a, a path towards, you know, failure or limited growth, or you find ways to talk yourself into a more positive space and move yourself forward. And again, I'm talking about the squishy middle ground. There are things you just can't do and acknowledging those limitations is very, very important. But there's a lot of stuff that can be in that squishy middle ground. And if you push yourself when appropriate, Sometimes that squishy middle ground becomes things you can do. And those limitations aren't as severe as you thought. All the time? No. Very often you've got very legitimate reasons for thinking you've got a particular limitation. But there is no harm in occasionally evaluating or reevaluating this and just thinking about, well, could I? Is this an option? Is this a possibility? In the situation I'm dealing with, um, I have a functional neurological disorder which causes all different kinds of movement symptoms. Um, and you guys have seen some minor ones sometimes when I've been recording, my hand poke, you know, banging on my chest or things like that. Well, it can be a lot bigger than that. And so I had this just horrible, horrible, really emotionally intense day. And at the end of it, I was, um, I talk about this in my post, but basically I'm an active member in by request. The other person had been had made multiple choices that were making my life much harder and chose to bring somebody who represented a group that was the root of the stress I was going through which was a good friend of mine was accused of inappropriate behavior it's complicated but the key things here is 
the person made multiple poor decisions, in my opinion. And I was very hurt by the way he had already treated me. And I was in a state of extreme emotions, which is basically the best way for me to have really bad symptoms. So um, something happened at that meeting. A person identified as part of the group that was basically attacking my friend and the strength of bite request, which has been a really has been one of the like big anchors in my life. And so I lost control of my body and my legs started pounding away on the floor. I was thrashing back and forth. It was a scene and I freely admit that. But I wasn't choosing to make a scene. I had symptoms in response to stress. And he knew this. Everybody in that, in that space knows I have these movements occasionally and is aware that I get comforted but nothing else happens and nothing else seems to need to happen and I come back down after a little bit. I got symptomatic and he looks at me from across the room and says very loudly, calm down in a very angry tone. I cannot control or prevent my symptoms. He has some anxiety issues, he's dealing with some mental health stuff, and I can understand in the moment possibly feeling threatened, and I can understand in the moment using those words. But at some point, ownership needs to be taken because I had something I could not control. And he chose to act as if my symptoms were intentional actions, which is denying my disability, basically. And he has never apologized. He's never taken ownership. Instead, he claimed victimhood. I don't quite understand how that one works, but that's what he did. And when asked why, you know, he admonished me in front of a room full of people for having an uncontrollable symptom, uh, he basically said, I'm the victim here. My disability made me do it. His disability didn't make him say something. And... His, he chose to say something because he felt apparently attacked. And the key here is, yes, his behavior in the moment hurt me, but what I'm more concerned about is his failure to take any ownership of it. Um, he has never apologized to me in an acceptable way. He was guided word by word into an apology, but basically he, what he kept trying to say was along the lines of, I am sorry that you are hurt rather than I am sorry that my words and actions hurt you. And that's a pretty important difference because it's about ownership. It does hurt me, but the bigger thing is he's hurting himself. Well, the lesson to be taken, I guess, because, you know, I care about me and I, I've reached a point of frustration with him. Um, by saying he's the victim, by refusing to take any kind of responsibility, by saying that this happened because of his disability and there is nothing that can be done about it, he is removing himself from ownership. He is putting himself in a position where there is no fix. Um, and he's removing the ability to learn or grow through this insistence. And that's something I don't want anybody to do. I want people to grow. I want people to learn. I want people to move forward with their lives. And 
I know he's going to hurt somebody else at some point, and I'm worried about that person. Um, and honestly, you know, again, he's not going to learn. He's hurting himself. I do not deny that anxiety can lead to actions. What I am saying is being controlled by your anxiety means that you can't break out of it. Um, stating that something happened because of your disability when there's a step in between an opportunity for reflection, an opportunity for control, an opportunity for consideration is devaluing yourself and is hurting your ability to learn and grow. Um, what I mean by this is, yes, I could not control or prevent the symptoms I had in response to his statement. But I could immediately identify why I got symptomatic. I was symptomatic because uh, the person who accompanied him to that particular meeting was part of the leadership of a group that was actively attacking my friend's credibility and in doing so was actively attacking this group that I have you know put so much time effort and energy into and so that attack that 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 attack by their presence by that name triggered emotionally a very strong negative response because I'm afraid of losing my primary support network. And I've lost it. In all honesty, I, I've lost it. Because they didn't take him to account for his behavior. And I no longer feel like I can trust the other members of leadership because of that. Not necessarily individually, but as a group. I didn't mean to quite go down this rabbit hole and I apologize. What I do with my symptoms is I take responsibility for the effects they have, even though I cannot prevent them from happening. What do I mean? I mean, if I get symptomatic in a space that's tightly packed and I brush into somebody, I apologize to that person for brushing into them because I did. If they ask me what happened, my explanation will be, I have a movement disorder and the space is tightly packed, which set off my symptoms. I'm taking responsibility for the action, but explaining it as part of my disability. I'm not going to say, oh, I didn't bump you. My disability made me do it. I say, I apologize for bumping you. Here is the explanation for why. And sometimes it can't be done in the moment, and I totally get that. But then it becomes more important to take that responsibility after the moment and acknowledge what you did and why. And again, it's not an excuse, it's an explanation. My disability made me do it is an excuse. I was feeling attacked. I misinterpreted your symptoms as behaviors. And so I responded to defend myself. That I could have accepted. It, you know, that makes sense. It fits the, the narrative. I, I get that. But my disability made me do it doesn't cut it, doesn't cover it, doesn't explain it. Um, it's really, really important because again, using your disability as an excuse hurts you. You can't grow, you can't learn if every time something goes wrong, you blame it on something you can't control. And that's the key takeaway here. If you are in a position where something is harder, something 
feels harder. And I'm talking whether you have a physical, you know, whatever kind of disability you have. And you start to say, I can't do it, or it wasn't in my control, or things like that. Take a moment and, and question that. And look to see if there's somewhere where you can, in a healthy way, own it. Again, I'm not going to say to somebody, oh, you were in my way, and, my dis- and no, I didn't bump you. It doesn't count because my disability made me do it. But I am going to say, I, I'm, you know, and I'm also not going to say, oh, God, I'm so, so sorry. I meant to, you know, or I meant to hit you or anything like that. It's just, just like, you know, any other person in the city who happens to touch another person, there's this, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to invade your personal space. And with my disability, that's still true. I'm owning the action, but I'm also being able to explain it because of my symptoms. And I'm not going to, you know, sit there and feel super guilty about it. Um, But I do take ownership of what I've done. And if somebody is hurt or if somebody asks, explain hey look this is what I have this is how it works and it wasn't intentional but yes it did happen I'm not going to invalidate their feelings I'm going to validate them but I have a very reasonable and true explanation for what happened and why and it was not done with intention so I just want you guys Uh, to think about what have you done how have you acted in the past and have there been times when you blamed your condition when it really wasn't because of your condition and what lessons can you learn from that because again you can't change the past there's no way to change the past and you can plan to do better in the future but you can't change the future you can only affect this moment so Take some time if you need to look at things in the past, look at decisions you've made in the past, look at conversations you've had in the past, or like, you know, it happens. And see if you can break it apart and see if there's a piece that you can learn from so that you don't have that kind of problem in the future. And again, I want this to be about learning and growth. I'm not talking about beat yourself up for a bad response. I'm not talking about be angry with yourself. I'm not talking about blaming yourself. And I'm not talking about, I'm talking about walking that line so that you are an independent person capable of growth and you are not a victim. That's the key to all of this. You you need to be able to take responsibility without holding on to guilt and without feeling bad about your actions, unless the feeling bad is a small bit to help spur you to do better next time. All right. I hope you guys found this useful, and please read my post to, um, as I dig into all of this a little more. And uh, please take care of yourself. And I just want every day to be an opportunity to learn and grow. And as you do that, the key thing is 